Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. We're now going to be discussing whether going to school is something you should be doing or not. We know this is an incredibly controversial topic, so it's something we, we wanted to talk about for quite some time now. And we hope that this is going to shed some light onto the topic, should you go to school or should you not go to school? This is particularly aimed at the CG industry. So if you're doing any kind of, uh, if you want to do animation, concept art, general computer graphics, gaming, etc. This is most going to be useful for you. It might be useful for other fields as well, but in general, this is going to be for computer graphic. Yeah, what we know is, is CG, the yes. effects, animation. So we can't really speak too much when it comes to the other fields, but I'm sure some of these apply to yeah. other educations as well. Yeah. So before we really get started with this, we just want to talk briefly about who we are. You know, why why do we have the authority to, to talk about this issue here <laughs> yeah. and why should you care? So just a quick backstory here. So Morten and I, we met at the animation workshop back in 2011 and we've been friends ever since. And since, ever since then, we've been going around schools in Europe and having been, we've been having tons of master classes, teaching at universities, and generally just been very involved in the field of education. And what we've seen has been, how do we put this, not always great. <laughs> we've seen a lot of variable qualities here. Some schools are absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, some leave a lot to be desired, to put it like that. So... We, based on our experience, we just want to have a fairly a fairly open discussion on the topic: Is yeah. school actually worth it? And I mean, we've been doing we've been doing CG and three D stuff for the past I don't know 10, 10 years. Yeah, 10, 12 years or something so something like that. And we've been in London for the past three or four years, just just working the effects here, working at different companies, seeing sort of talking to people students, interns from different schools around the world, yeah. particularly also here in the UK. Um, so there, there's, we've seen like a, a widespread sort of amount of uh, amount of students that come into the industry yeah. and the sort of, I don't know how to put it, like the burden they come with after mm. school. Um, that's, uh, th I think that's like the main topic of, of today's discussion. Yeah. So before we really get started with actually the school part, we have to just briefly talk about how do you get a job? Like what is the main purpose of going to school is is you want to get a job afterwards. A lot of secondary things which are super nice, which is, you know, you can party a lot. You meet <laughs> meet tons of cool people. You know, maybe you can go to the beach if you're in a summer in a sunny place and all that. But the primary reason for going to school for most people will be to get a job. Yeah. So let's just briefly talk about that. So in pretty much all areas of the creative industry, the most important part of getting a job is your portfolio. It's your showreel and proving that you can do the job. Yeah, I mean, essentially, companies only care about your skills. Yeah. I mean, sure, they care about who you are as a person. That's important um, as well. You know, if you go into an interview and you complete asshole <laughs> with the best portfolio, they're probably not going to hire you. Yeah. But bottom line is, if your work is not very good, yeah. then you're most likely not going to get a job. Yeah. So what this means is that if you have a bachelor, a master's degree or a PhD, <laughs> that is not terribly important. I've yet to meet somebody who's been hiring in this field and who's been really caring about this. It's been whenever I, I asked my former boss who what he would do if somebody had a PhD and he would be like, cool show me your reel. <laughs> like that, that is really the essence of it. Yeah. That by far the most important thing is, can you do the job? That's also because, you know, in our field, there is no hazard, like there is no health hazard. If you screw up your job, like you're not going to kill 200 people on a construction site or poison the well or, you know, something like that. We're doing visual things, absolute worst case. It doesn't look good. Yeah. And I think I, I'm, I'm a little afraid that sometimes people seem to because of this, how, how education has been traditionally, is right, that you have to have uh, a better education, a better job, that yeah. kind of thing. So people in, in animation and VFX who seem to be struggling to get a job, I've, I've seen a couple of times equate that to, well, maybe I just need more education. Yeah. And then they further their education. Maybe they already have a bachelor, but then they further it and they spend more money, but they're still left with no job yeah and that's you know obviously not a very desirable situation for anyone no it really isn't so let's talk about some general harsh truths this these are just these are pretty much facts which are true regardless of if, whether you go to school or not or 
whether you're self-taught mm. or whatever, however you get your skills. So the first one is that you will have to put in the work. Like whether you go to the best school in the world or you're, if you're, you're sitting in your mom's basement learning CD through some, maybe some <laughs> flip normal tutorials. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> then you will have to put in the amount of work needed. No school is going to make you better. The school can only show you the door. Yeah. They can't actually, they can't, they can't telepathically transfer knowledge to your brain. <laughs> in order to become a good sculptor or texture artist or whatnot, you just have to sculpt a lot or do a lot of texturing. This is true for regardless of what it is you're doing. You just have to put in an absolutely crazy amount of work to learn anything in this field. Like I've, I've seen that a lot of times. Now, b both when I went to school, but also but when I've been teaching. Like you come to class, let's say I'm a teacher, and you come to class, uh, some of the students, they might, they come in late or whatever, and maybe they leave mm. when they're supposed to leave. At four o'clock. Four o'clock, like air quotations. <laughs> um, and, it, you know, that's cool. If, if that's your focus, maybe you, maybe you go home and work afterwards. It's not that you have to stay at the school. Mm. But a lot of the people who have a tendency to just leave and, and don't engage with the other students or the teacher who is there, maybe they don't, maybe they're not cut out for it. They don't actually put in the amount of work you yeah. have to put in. Like, it's not just like the whole nine to five. I guess when no. you're going to school, it's like the shorter you go, you yeah. don't go to school for it. Well, most people. I don't so, some some schools have from like 10 to three. Yeah, exactly. And, and let me just put it like this. That is not even close to sufficient. If you were spending four to five hours every single day learning CG, that is, is nowhere near because your competition is spending twice of that. Yeah. So, put in the hours you have to just become really obsessed about this <laughs> yeah. because this, this is a really hard field to get into and if you don't do it you might end up working in a completely separate field it's kind of messed up because I, I, I remember you know years back when i was just when i was trying to learn anatomy and these kind of things mm. it, it would be like go to school you're there for like maybe six or seven hours and then maybe you go home then you watch a tutorial for one or two yeah. hours then you start drawing you pick up a book for a couple other hours after you eat you do that and then you go to bed at like 11 so you, yeah. you work for like the last 12 or 14 hours and that was that was my life for like three years while yeah. i was going to school not to say that you have to it can be less it could be more yeah. but that was my experience with it but that's also because that's what, as a result of that direct result of that that's also why you were personally able to get into this field as quickly as you did yeah i mean both mort and i we got into we, we had a job in vfx like before we were technically done with school mm. and that was because we put in 10 to 12 hours every single day and if you want to have more work-life balance that's absolutely fine you don't have to <laughs> go crazy like this we're just saying that if you want to if you want to work in like in a really good game studio or movie studio or whatnot, you will have to put in the hours. I, th I think you, you, have, you made a good point before about it's you might go home after six hours or whatever mm. and then you just think, okay, I'm not, now I'm just going to Netflix and chill or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure there are other people that do that as well. But just think about how many motivated people there are out there yeah. that want to go. Maybe they want to be the concept artist at yeah. four, Naughty Dog or whatever. Yeah they're willing to put in the 14 <laughs> hours so you probably should too so if they're putting in 10 or 12 hours and you're putting in five they can get to the same level in two years which you can, you have to spend four years on exactly and this is extrapolated over like imagine if they do that for 10 years <laughs> you know like they're just going to be they're just going to be like exponentially further ahead than you are yeah so the second thing we want to talk about as well is here that bad schools can make you worse you can practice wrong. We, we've actually seen this with a fair few students that their teachers have been so bad in certain cases that they've taught them the wrong standards. Like imagine if you're if you're doing character modeling and you've been told that end guns are totally fine <laughs> for everything. So you just you, you uh, just bait, put that into your into your workflow. Yeah. You you can definitely practice wrong. And if you have if you have bad teachers for three, four years. You're gonna get three, four, three to four years of bad habits. We have seen this. This is a real case. I, I remember. I remember a, a particular story of a, a friend of mine who who went to school, and he w he went be before he started school. He was already a professional concept artist, and you know he arrived at school and he was there. And I think it was it was around second year in school. We had a talk about sort of skill level, mm. and he and it, it okay it might come off a little bit arrogant but he was an amazing concept artist and we had a talk about like other people weighing you down 
because he was in class, he was always, I mean, he was already good enough to be a professional because mm-hmm. he already was. He just wanted some other skills. But he actually saw himself um, being dragged down by other students mm-hmm. and by the teachers that they were having just yeah. because they weren't up to snuff. Um, not to say that that is the thing that will happen, no. but if you are at a school where you might not be in the ideal situations, these things can happen. And then imagine if you're not already professional or you're not already at a super high level yeah like if you come into a place where they don't teach you the right things yeah. and you're already at beginner level then you're just going to be dragged further down yeah and then you have like henning says then you just have a ton of bad habits that you need to get rid of before you actually can start practicing the right way yeah that that is detrimental to your career We've we've seen that a fair few times that if you're in a bad environment, you might not know that you're a bad environment mm. because you've been trusting school, the school system your entire life. You went to high school, it's been fine. Now you're getting to university, and it's just been trustworthy. So you might you might say that the best person in class is a ten, and the worst person is a one. And if you're like one of the best, maybe you're like an eight out of ten. But the, the the reality is that that might not that might not be an accurate representation of the entire field. Maybe the best person in your class isn't even close to good enough to getting a job. So <laughs> yeah, you're in like this protected bubble. Yeah, where you might be a ten, but in in the bubble that is the world, you probably a two. Yeah. So we we've also seen that before as well. You get this like this false sense of security because of the school environment has just been really bad and if you see somebody who's way better than you sure you're going to be you're going to be striving to become as good but if you know you're the best in class you might not really yeah. have some to strive for and people have sort of people have learned to trust schools yeah, trust the, they really have. The, it's authority right you you go to a school you're you're told that uh, yeah, yeah, you can get a job and you know teachers are supposed to be good they're authority figures and yeah. you listen to them um but the problem is if you have authority figures that tell you the wrong things. Yeah. And they might be, maybe they worked in industry and uh, they're boasting about how they worked in a movie in the <laughs> mid nineties. <laughs> We've seen that if you worked, sorry, if you, but if you worked at ILM in 1993, yeah, it's cool that you worked on like maybe Jurassic Park or whatnot, but it's almost 30 years ago. It's like a good 25, 26 years ago yeah. since you were in the field. Yeah. 3D's changed a lot. 3D has changed a lot. <laughs> and also if you go to a school as well, you are in no way guaranteed a job. Just because they tell you that most people will get a job afterwards does not mean that you will get a job. No, I mean, it's like anything in life. There are no guarantees. No. It's, it's, even if you go to school, there's nothing out there that says that, okay, because you put in those three years of hard work or mediocre work, I don't know, whatever yeah. it was, you don't you don't deserve a job. No. Like, you have to earn that job. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, again, back to the whole competition about think about how many people are fighting for that one position. Yeah. And yeah. the more specialized that position is, the harder the competition is going to be. Yeah. So. And uh, one other thing, we 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 will definitely be talking about more about this later on. But just a brief introduction to it is, money. Mm-hmm. You can't talk about schools without talking about money. If you're in a financial situation where you, you know, your parents are a CEO of a major bank or whatnot, <laughs> you're probably fine. <laughs> that part isn't as relevant. School's great. The school the school is awesome. <laughs> but if you're not, you know, money is such an important factor for this we that that's that's one of my main points when it comes to to schools for discouraging people from going to school it is absolutely insanely expensive to attend certain schools and it's it's not that it's not that this isn't it's not that this is an incredibly low paying field certain jobs here can pay quite well yeah but if you're looking at how much certain schools are compared to what you can expect to earn. It means that you will mathematically never be able to pay it off. It is it is absolutely shocking. So as an example here, in the UK, the people in power, they felt the smartest thing they could do was to increase tuition fee by three times, from around <laughs> £3,000 to £9,000. <laughs> this it might be the dumbest thing they have ever done because the culture didn't change. So. If you, if you were a couple of years ago, you were going to go to school and it was £3,000, you could still afford that. You always envision yourself going to school, you have a dream university and all that. Yeah. But suddenly, they increased it by three times to £9,000 a year. You're still going to go to school. And the school hasn't changed. The school isn't better. It just means instead of the school getting money from, from the government, they now get money from you. So it's the exact same course as before. So you might now be paying £9,000 a year 
for three to four years to get a bachelor slash master's degree. So that is that is around ten thousand per year. So that's three thousand pounds or thirty thousand pounds just in tuition fees. Let's say maybe it's a bit more than that. Maybe you take four years. So let's say it's around. Let's say uh, to exaggerate a little bit here, it's around forty thousand. If you live in London, that's around twelve thousand pounds a year. So if you round that down to ten thousand. For four years, you're talking to you're talking about around seventy to eighty thousand pounds. Yeah, that's a lot. Like that is on a. I don't know how much. You, how much is that in in dollars? Like uh, like sixty thousand dollars, maybe. Yeah. Around that. Jeez. That is that is an absolutely insane amount of money. When when I went to school, we can just talk some numbers here. I um we we Mort and I both attended the animation workshop, and uh, I had around twenty thousand pounds in loans after I was done there, and I was supposed to pay that off in 20 years <laughs> and that was only 20,000 pounds sure I could have paid it off earlier and, and I'm, I'm lucky that I was able to pay that off right away but that would have weighed me down like crazy yeah and that's only 20,000 pounds and I was able to get a job as well afterwards yeah that's a that's, I mean that is a that's cheap that is that com- is cheap compared to a lot of alternatives out there it's 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 beyond crazy. So one of the most like genuinely heartbreaking things I've seen is when I've been teaching teaching schools here in the UK or generally talking to students. They're in their third year. They maybe have four or five months left of their school, and I mean actually four or five months, and they're supposed to finish their show reel at that point, and they realize that they aren't even close to good enough. They yeah. they have to spend three four more years just refining their their skills. Yeah, and and this this realization often doesn't come until they actually talk to someone who knows what they're talking about yeah. the problem the problem is when you have again when you have the teachers that that might reside at the school they're the ones that teach them regularly and they keep telling them oh yeah this is this is pretty good then once you're actually confronted with what your portfolio actually looks like i, I mean of course your entire world is going to collapse and 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 in most cases it hasn't been because henning or morton has been talking no, to them no. it's been because you got feedback by the market not responding to you. Yeah, because like most most of the time, if you apply to a let's say you apply to Framestore, MPC, DNAC, whatever it is here in the UK, uh, if you send in a shitty reel, then they don't care. They're just no. going to ignore it. Yeah. Because they have so many other people that they need to go through. Yeah. They will only get back to the people where they think, okay, here's some potential. Yeah. The the, the amount of reels they're getting, <laughs> we're getting in work now is it's absolutely insane. Like yeah. you're talking thousands of reels maybe per month. It's it's insane. You will not get feedback from the studios. So, if, so if you're now sixty thousand in the red, and you're graduating in th- two months, and you're not even close to being able to get yeah. a job, like that is going to weigh you down forever. I, I recently talked to some people who are running a school here in the UK, and they said that after the tuition fee raised to nine k, they've seen a lot more anxiety, a lot more depression, because these people are now they're going to be in debt forever, mm-hmm. at least if they they're not getting. The skill sets they they require. Yeah, I mean, and this is a this maybe this will be helpful to someone. I don't know, but so Henning and I went to the same school, and it was a relatively cheap school. Yeah, uh, which is good, you know, awesome. I also worked throughout school. Yeah. I did that for all three years when I was attending school, three three and a half something like yeah. that, and and that that helped me pay off. You know my student yeah, loan. Same um, again, that depends on the the amount that the work that you can get, uh, the amount of pay you're able to get. If you can get any freelance or that kind of thing, yeah. that is super useful as well. It also sort of gets you ready for yeah. the real world. I yeah, the work we were doing there was oftentimes very relevant to yeah, it. Yeah. I was doing a lot of teaching actually as mm. a student. That was a lot of fun, and just doing general freelance projects there. Yeah. But definitely, I mean, if I hadn't done that, I would not be able to pay off my student loans. But uh, but again, all of that that hinges so much on you just putting in the work. Yeah. Like I, I've had I've had portfolio reviews where students they come in, and uh, oh man, I remember this one time I had someone come in with their parents. <laughs> oh no. And that's the that is the worst. Like yeah. parents, they just need to go away. Yeah. Like they need to not be there when you talk to them because oftentimes, I find that most students are receptive to to feedback if they're talking to someone that they know is maybe is good at something or someone they they know about or respect or whatever. Mm. So most people are some people don't want to hear anything, but most some people come to those portfolio reviews and just expect praise. Yeah. But when they have their parents with them, oh 
God, that's horrible. Because then the parents will start to come in and defend them as to why this thing yeah. doesn't look a certain way. So, if any parents out there, you know, just don't, don't, don't <laughs> let do your kid do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Don't be in their interview. It's <laughs> yeah. weird. It is weird. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> <laughs> so some other some other things to talk about in terms of money as well. We can just mention like I'm I'm from Norway and Martin is from Denmark here, mm. and this the private schools in Norway would also be around the same price as this, the UK schools, which is around they're around hundred thousand to hundred ten thousand Norwegian crowns, which is around ten thousand pounds or roughly that. And it's the same story, you know, if don't do that unless you know that this is gonna be working out for you. Yeah. You're gonna be paying that off for ages. The the most shocking example though isn't necessarily like the UK schools, because I mean ten thousand pounds or nine nine grand a year, that's a lot of money, don't get me wrong. But oh boy Let's go across the pond to the great yeah. states. In the United States, the most hotshot schools out there, they will be ranging from around a hundred thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars slash pounds to around two hundred thousand dollars to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Like, and, and not that's not per year though. To be fair, that yeah, that's yeah. that's that's for an entire three to four year education, and oftentimes that does include living expenses. But but still. But still, you can go to a site like glassstore.com. Glassstore allows you to... This is not a plug or anything. Yeah. This is just pure information. We're not sponsored for this. Uh, <laughs> Glassstore allows you to check salaries for various studios. So you can now just... You can go to Glassstore and you can check something like Pixar, Weta, ILM, you know, mm. all these. And you can see the general salary people are making there. And, and again, keep in mind, the people who get into these jobs, these are the best people. And you yeah. can now see the salaries for it. So let's say you have a salary there, which is $60,000 a year, which I, I don't know what position that would be for, but let's say that is a, that is a salary you might have. If you have 200, if you're $250,000 in debt, you are not paying that off. Like that is absolutely insane like if, if you if you're 250,000 in red like you are literally never paying that off yeah maybe you'll with be a able to salary. save I don't know 10 maybe 15,000 dollars a year yeah. after taxes and, and maybe yeah maybe if you're a good saver yeah if you you're know, good saver. It's, it's 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 really I think you you shouldn't underestimate the financial no sort of situation you're potentially putting yourself in not that you should uh, you know give up on your dreams and go to this school because this school costs less or whatever, but I think it is definitely something that you should put into your calculations for the future. Yeah, yeah. Because but the thing is as well that like most people when they go to these kind of universities, maybe they're I don't know, nineteen, yeah, twenty. You, so, maybe? so some people here are like seventeen as well in the UK. Like seventeen. That is a crazy you low You just lost your milk teeth. <laughs> exactly. And like you shouldn't be making financial decisions that are gonna haunt you until you die no. at that age. No. I think it's it's crazy. It's so irresponsible. Like you're you aren't allowed to drink, but you're allowed to you're allowed to make financial decisions which will literally haunt you for the rest of your life. Yeah. I mean, I guess the good thing about student loans is that generally uh, the interests are low, so yeah. that's <laughs> that's really <Yeah>. good. <laughs> but so that's nice. I think I, uh, but one, another important topic to just quickly touch upon as well is um, is the whole topic of grades. Yeah, it's um, I've seen this a fair few times, even you know when I went to school, is that people get. I guess that's just how schools are. Like you're taught from grade school that okay, you got to get the best mark because oh, yes. having the best mark means you're the best mm -hmm. and you're best in class and all, all that bullshit. But I mean, ultimately, it's back to what we talked about before. It's about your skills. Mm -hmm. it's just, an employer is not going to care if you got a quadruple plus yeah. and marks up and whatever no. you know kind of grade you get. It's like yeah. Sure, you have great grades on your bachelor degree, but your reel is still not rendered. Yeah, it's specific example. There was when I finished the animation workshop, I didn't get the best grade. I got a B, <laughs> and um, but at the same time, during my exam, I was working on Batman v Superman. <laughs> yeah, it's I was working on texturing Doomster for that. I apologize for the design for that. I wasn't the best <laughs> thing. Didn't have anything to do with that. Textures are nice, but uh, That's weird proportions. Yeah, weird proportions. But <laughs> so I got a B, and I was texturing. I was working on texturing Doomsday at, at the same time. At the same time, I had my I had my exam from a meeting room at NPC, like. Nobody cares about your grades. Yeah. Like that is insane. I've seen people with like the highest grades you can get, A honors, mega plus, you know, <laughs> whatever they're called. Like nobody cares. It just means that in your school, you got A honors. But again, 
the rest of the world doesn't care about your grade system. No, we it's care like about that what you do. Bubble there. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, you know, that being said, I, you know, the grades probably reflect your general commitment yeah. to, you know, whatever you're doing For in sure. school. So obviously, you should strive to not be trash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, I would assume if you get super bad grades, then maybe you're not as good. Yeah. I don't know. But maybe because sometimes you could have people that are kind of lazy in school. They don't care about that. But then they go home and they just, you know, they just beat up some, some crazy concepts and they're yeah. still amazing. And so. also depends on what it's graded by. Is it graded based on your academic papers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because uh, at the animation workshop where we went, they were, were basically nothing. It was as little <laughs> as you could possibly get away with. It was like, what do you think about violent video games? <laughs> and it's like, how do you feel about yeah. the last three months? Yeah. Oh, they're oh, great. That was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> but um, at, at certain schools, you have legit hard exams. Like, yeah. I was at a school a few weeks ago now with you know, they have hardcore math exams and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, that it's by all means, if you're going into something more technical, like effects of programming or rigging, maybe high level maths is awesome. But just keep in mind that your academic performance is not being counted towards if you if you get a job here. Yeah, it's I mean, your if, skill set. If a, if a recruiter looks at uh, that, then I think you should get a different recruiter. Yeah, probably. I'd probably do that. But it it also sort of segues into you know the what's the what's the best decision you can make when deciding which schools to go to. Yeah. Because like you're saying, some like that school they were focusing on there was a lot of maths. Yeah. There was some there were some tests in like logical thinking, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And and that's great if you're doing effects. Yeah. Maybe you're doing rigging. If you're a technical person. Exactly. But so different schools they will have a different kind of focus. You yeah. know, some schools are more probably more specialized in storytelling and stylized things, where some schools are more focused on realism yeah. and the technical aspects. As a specific example here, like again, uh, the animation workshop is way more focused on storytelling and the stylized stuff, while the schools in the UK, such as Bournemouth. They are they're way more focused on mm. realism. You're not really if you go to if you go to the animation workshop and you expect to be able to do super high end VFX off the bat, where you're going to be doing black insane black level matching and learning everything <laughs> about like the grade node in Nuke, like you're not going to be getting that. You will be getting storytelling and all that. Yeah. And 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 the opposite if you go to to Bournemouth in the UK, which is one of the more famous schools here, if you expect to learn crazy storytelling. You know, you're not going to get that, but you will get high level match grading between compositing and you will learn, you might learn stuff like Houdini and all that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. So like Morten's saying, you definitely figure out what school is right for you. Yeah. Really do your research here. Because it also, it depends on like the field that you want to get into afterwards. Yeah. Like let's say you do want to get into VFX, then maybe picking a school that's more tailored towards VFX. Yeah. You know, you have something like... Uh, um, Vancouver Film School. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You know, they yeah. do a lot of sort of realism stuff, and they have yeah. those student projects. And yeah, th- absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, for sure, figure out what school is right for you. Like, if you want to be a concept artist, maybe getting a fine arts degree is better because then you yeah. learn then you learn the the core art fundamentals. But if you want to be an effects artist and you do fine art, I mean, <laughs> that's that's wrong you know like photoshop's just a tool if yeah. you're if you're a classically trained painter then picking up photoshop is just like oh you're just learning a technical yeah. tool for that yeah. so yeah absolutely so this is one of the main things as well with this do your own research like i've seen people pick their education and they spend less time on that than they spend on their amazon purchases <laughs> you know how you people people review people go through like 20 reviews to buy like a new like like a racer or some ladder, like a like <laughs> yeah. new shampoo on Amazon. It costs them like twenty pounds. Yeah, exactly. And you're gonna do pick the one with five stars instead of four point five stars. But people just pick a, pick a school based on maybe they've heard some good things about it. Maybe they got a brochure from the school, yeah. which is by definition biased. Yeah, they're pretty you, biased. They want your money. Yeah, it's. I mean, I, I think some of the schools I've seen flyers from, they're using sort of. I don't know, like dirty tactics maybe a yeah. little bit where they were they'll give you certain promises. Yeah. You know, we we just talked about the whole placement rate, you know, eighty to ninety percent placement rate after yeah. you finish uh, your education and that that's straight up probably a lie. That's one of the biggest red flags if yeah, we just talked about this before recording now. Like if you see if you see a school which is which is claims to have that ninety to ninety five percent of all students got jobs afterwards they are most likely lying. I mean, there might be exceptions here. You know, there are. I, I've talked to people who have been running schools because I, I wrote this in an article. 
<laughs> which is linked to in the description. If I've talked to people who've been like, no, but actually our school has legit 90%. But that's because they took in like five students yeah. and four of them got a job afterwards. Like if you are incredibly selective with your students, you might be able to have that. But then saying 90%, that's a bit misleading. Yeah, but also maybe maybe it could be, yeah, you take in 50 students every year mm. and 90% of them get a job as, I don't know, a roto artist. Yeah. And then they get fired afterwards. Yeah. Because I, it, you, cause you're not going to be able to keep up that kind of like hiring level all no. the time. You'll bring in some people for some things and then you'll scrap them again. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, the, it's crazy how much research you actually have to do for these kinds of schools yeah. just to be sure. Um, because you shouldn't trust them. No, like, you re- that should, that's a really good point. Actually. Like it's a business. Your default position when doing talking to a school is you do not trust what they're saying. Yeah. You validate this with your own research. Before I went to the animation workshop, I talked to several of the students there. I, I, I found their email and I spoke to them over email. I, I went to the school, visited the school, and I, I, phoned, uh, I phoned the coordinator there and actually had a proper conversation with mm. them. And that, from that, I, I knew that it was a, it was a good school. It wasn't the school doesn't do marketing. Like animation does uh, does no marketing. It's terrible for that. <laughs> so like it's kind of something people just kind of f- fall into by accident. Yeah. But I knew that it was the right place for me, not because of some brochure I got at a, at a convention, but because I talked to people, and more importantly, the student work was phenomenal. This is one of the biggest red flags there can be. If there is no student work online or if the student work is bad. Like we said, the most important thing about getting a job is is your work good. If they're not showing any of the work, (laughs) that is... That's probably a reason. That is very suspicious. Yeah. So if they're not showing anything, maybe it's just not online. But then you can can at least find it. You can find their students on LinkedIn. You can find their blogs, or Tumblrs, whatever. But if they're showing bad work, that's suspicious. Then you're wondering, why is this the best they can do? Yeah, and you should be able to request student work from them. Like, hey, can you send me some examples of previous students? Like, what did they do? You know, what did they do throughout the years? What What does the curriculum look like? Just some basic questions about the course. Yeah super important to figure that out yeah because it is like we just talked about it is like it is a financial decision that you make at probably a young age yeah most likely a young age yeah. there there might be some older people that make the decision but maybe they already have an education yeah. and it's maybe they're in different financial situation as well i really can't stress how important this decision is and i i think it's it's kind of People sort of just sort of brush over it a little bit when they go, yeah, I need to go to school, I need to go to university to get a degree so I can get a job. Maybe you don't. I mean, maybe, honestly, maybe you don't. Yeah. The guy sitting right next to me at work now, he's a friend of mine, Jan, he um, he has no formal education whatsoever and he's a senior character modeler or senior modeler at Double Negative. Yeah, he's awesome. He's absolutely fantastic to work with. And if he were to go to school, I mean, would he get better? Maybe, maybe not, but it worked out for him. It yeah. means that he has no student debt whatsoever to worry about. And, and one of the things I, I think is so important when talking about this, a lot of recruiters are saying that, you know, you start off as a runner, you go into, you go oh. from, it, it's such a heated topic here. <laughs> well, and my opinion here is that if you go in as a runner, you're wasting your time. You, what people are saying is that, the way you get into VFX or gaming or whatnot is you, you go from school, you go you take a bachelor degree, then you go in as the most entry-level position there is in the entire field where you might be in the post office or use some Q&A or whatnot. And I just don't think that's a very good way of doing it. No. You could have just skipped that entire education and just gone straight into running. Yeah, you know, and now all of a sudden you're not 60,000 pounds in debt. Like this is, I think this is one of the things I hate the most about our industry is how they're so keen on getting people in as runners and people just students just seem to accept it that that the fact is that you come in you spend three years you're so much in debt and then you start at the post office like like, you might as well not have taken an education yeah it's literally pointless and this is something which has changed over the last few years because maybe 10 years ago, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people were supervisors now. They did start off as runners. 
but a lot has changed mm-hmm. since then. One of the main things which has changed, at least in the effects over the last maybe five, 10 years is a lot of work is now being outsourced to India and China and different places around yeah. the world. It means that if you, if, you, if you were to start a few years ago in VFX, you could start off doing something like retopology or you know like more entry level jobs, but they aren't really here anymore. Yeah, now most of our retopology just gets sent to India anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, it's so I mean, this is segueing a bit away from the whole school thing, but just as a general thing, I, I really recommend not going in as a runner right after school. Because again, it doesn't matter if you run for six months, two years, whatnot. What matters is, can you do the job? You're not going to have some hotshot effects artist in the basement <laughs> sitting, in the, you know, sitting in a post office. Yeah. If you're good enough, you know, you're good enough. Yeah, but but that's I, I guess that's fair enough. It's when let's say you you come out of school, you don't actually have those skills. Yeah. Then maybe a running position is the way to go about it for you. Yeah. Because that it it, it it like you know no matter what it is a foot in the door. It is. And they do sort of the studios here. They do kind of look at the people who are runners to they, they want to promote them. Yeah. Right. So that is a positive thing, but the whole premise of going to school just to get a runner's position is absolutely yeah. ridiculous to me. Yeah. You could have just sat in your basement or whatever for a few months, yeah. just cranked out a lot of shit, be really good at what you're doing and still doing the running stuff. Yeah. But on the side, instead of amassing this massive debt, yeah. maybe you live with your parents or maybe you live with other people just to you know cut down the costs. Yeah. There, I think there are many ways around this thing. Yeah. Uh, another point to the whole money thing as well. This is something which... This might sound absolutely insane. When we're talking to students about this, they they just cover their hands and go like, oh, shit. Essentially, for the money you're spending a year, if you're spending £9,000 a year, you could afford to hire a mid-level 3D artist for <laughs> one to two days every single week for a full year. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to go into effects, you could literally afford to hire an effects artist for one to two days only focusing on you for eight hours a day. He would come home to you, sit <laughs> in front of your computer, or you know, over Skype or whatnot. I mean, this is, it's not that this is a service which exists. You can't just go to effectsartist.com and hire a guy there. <laughs> but that is how much money you're talking about. Yeah. That, you know, you could you could divide how much money you're spending on this, which might be like 200,000 or 100,000, sorry, 100,000 with your pounds or 10,000. 10,000 pounds, and you can divide that over how many school days there are, which uh, might be around maybe 100 to 200 days, depending on the school. Mm. And you can see how much it costs you every single day. I think breaking that down is good because yeah. it, it sort of it gives you a, a realistic perspective on how much money you are spending. Yeah, like people are in certain schools, like in, in the UK, where certain days you don't have schools. Maybe you have schools three days a week where yeah. you actually have an instructor. You are paying around... F- 50, 60, 70 pounds a day to attend school. It's insane. Yeah, it's the, the numbers, they, they they creep up pretty quickly. Yeah. So then you could have essentially gone together with five of your friends, or four other friends, you have five people now, and you could have hired a VFX artist full-time <laughs> for the same amount of money. I mean, I don't know where you would find a VFX artist. Like <laughs> no, exactly. And also you wouldn't get the money because this is a student loan, of course. So yeah, this yeah. is not a real thing. You can't just... You can't just snatch up a uh, VFX artist. But that is, the math adds up there. You yeah. could have done that <laughs> if you were to do that. <laughs> just as a comparison. Just as a comparison. It's crazy stuff. Another one we want to talk about, which is also a massive red flag, is uh, the school is going to say that, well, we have had students which has gone to Pixar, Disney, ILM, Weta, all these cool places here. Mm. If a school has been in business for 20 years, since, you know, like the, the late 90s, which a lot of them have been, and they've been pumping out 30 to 100 students every single year, it is statistically unlikely <laughs> that they haven't done that. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, there's a, you know, it's just math. Numbers, when you, when you have that many students over that long of a yeah. period, of course, some of them are going to end up at some of the bigger studios. Yeah. That's just how it is. I mean, 20 students, conservatively 20 students a year for 20 years. It's a lot of studios, a lot of students. And, you know, if, if these guys have been in the industry for like 20 years, of course, a lot of them are going to do well. Yeah. Do not take the statement that you, our students went to Pixar as, as, a, as a stamp of quality f- to the school. It will, of course, they have gone to Pixar. I mean, there are many factors that plays, plays in this because you can, you can look at some of the 
I don't know. It's just like an example. Some of the worst schools in the world, and you'll have one or two students in there who just work their ass off mm-hmm. because they just don't want to be stuck in anything, and they just yeah. want to excel, and they will excel yeah. because they just put in the work. And it doesn't matter if it's the worst or the best school in the world. Yeah. Like, if you have that kind of mentality, then... Yeah, then you're all done with Pixar. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Confirmed. No. <laughs> <laughs> so also whenever you're looking at schools, like Google the school and look at forum threads and look at uh, various yeah. reviews online and Twitter. Like what, do, what do actual people say about it? Yeah. Not the school itself. Yeah, this is so important. I've seen that a fair few times where people are, they're just bashing their school like crazy on various forums. And I mean, of course, keep this, take this with a grain of salt as well. But I've seen this, particularly with the more expensive schools that... A lot of them are fairly, I'm not going to say abusive, but exploitative. Mm-hmm. They will, they want your money. Yeah. And certain schools are like, they were like £10,000 for three months. Really review these schools. You know, talk to the students, read proper reviews online about this. Ask people on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Yeah. Just get proper people. To- yeah, because I mean, it, it can also be, it could be a school that, Maybe it isn't even a school, you know, maybe maybe it's just an online course mm-hmm. and the online course is one thing that I feel I mean, it's the whole problem you have on the Internet now, I guess, is that people want things now. Yeah. They don't want things in two years. They want them right away. And, you know, you have courses in schools that cater to that. They tell you, are oh, you zero to hero in two seconds or whatever? And that's bullshit. Yeah. I mean, you're never like uh, the, it's just. Uh, the fact is you have to put in the work. Yeah. So if someone guarantees you that you'll be industry ready in three months after taking this course or go to this school, there's probably something wrong. Yeah. If, if they say that and you can learn something in three months, that then, you, then you're talking about an absolute entry level role like yeah. that you might be doing something which requires literally no prerequisites for that. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, they're, I mean, maybe they're right. They're probably not lying, but it's just... <laughs> industry ready let's go with that term it's it could be like you say it's like okay now you can go in as a runner yeah you're ready to enter the industry yeah it's like the amount of information you have to get through your brain (laughs) in order to become like a even like a fairly decent junior or 3d artist you need to know so many things it's like if i told you you could learn a language in three months of course you can't do that. You can learn certain parts of a language in three months, but you can't do it. It's the same with CG. Yeah. You cannot learn something in that time. When if people have if people have gone to schools like um, like who claim to, to be able to accelerate you in three months, the people who succeed are people with already decent skills. Yeah. Like uh, we were talking about Morton was talking about before. If you if you know fine art, learning Photoshop isn't that hard or painting in Photoshop. Because the hard part about painting and Photoshop or concept art is not the technical brush tool. Yeah, <laughs> it is learning all the principles. Yeah, like I, I did, um, I, I taught a course once for professionals. We were, they, there were about six or seven of them in the class. And it was a course um, directed at people who were already working. People who were already yeah. either freelancing or working in VFX or something, but it was it was created to up their skill set. Mm. And they, you know, they didn't, like, lay it on thick about, oh, okay, you'll just be, like, a master Houdini thing in, like, two weeks or whatever. But it was, like, get your stuff up to, sc- up to scratch yeah. because you already know something. Yeah. Like, if you're starting from nothing, then that is pretty much impossible. Yeah. Yeah, that that's just not doable. I've never seen that before where somebody no. has gone from a li- literally a newbie like you've never touched it touched it before to being able to go into into mm-hmm. any job it, it's just not true but i mean let's talk about though what do you actually do if you're not going to go to school like this is not like all gloom and doom no <laughs> no absolutely not <laughs> so i mean there are a lot of there are a lot of really good points about going to school here and we had a very good time mm-hmm. and you know it was three years in a tiny city of in denmark and it was you know amazing student environment yeah and we just, I just generally had a really, really good time there. Like I, I matured a lot. I was twenty when I started a school, and I just improved a lot as a person. Yeah. I became Henning two point oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. I met a lot of new friends. I learned a lot of stuff. So for me, school was really good. Uh, yeah. One of the main things there is networking. I think that's one of the very, very key things about a school. It's a physical location yes. that you go to. 
and you you have camaraderie you find people with similar interests mm -hmm. people that you can learn from people that you can help learn yes. from you like that whole part of going to school i think is completely invaluable yeah and i i don't want to detract from that at all with all the other stuff we've talked about no. money and bad schools and stuff that that part is really important yeah like for you as a person yeah what i what i tell often tell the students is the guy who's going to get you the job is sitting right next to you right now <laughs> and then everyone gets really awkward and look at the person <laughs> next to each other and be like oh hello <laughs> But, but that is often true. I've seen so many times people get into into various jobs because of their friends, people yeah. who they know. Just, if you're not going through the front door, then now, you're, now you can get your reel to the head of whatever department you want to get into. You can get it, your reel to his desk, his or her desk, right away. So, it, many, so many times when I've applied for a job, I've probably not applied directly yeah i've talked to someone who works at a company and i go like hey do you, do you have any open positions yeah. they go like oh yeah let me just just check and then yeah. maybe maybe then the recruiter gets in touch yeah it's just so useful because uh, uh, that also goes <laughs> that uh, that's also just like a quick one just um that, you know don't be a dick <laughs> Uh, I think that's really important. Really, seriously. Do like, because it, it's such a small industry. Everyone knows everyone. Yeah. Like, maybe, you know, you have a name somewhere. Maybe someone has heard about you or whatever, but it doesn't take a lot to ruin someone's reputation. No. Like, if they someone starts talking about someone at a company or at school, even, where they mm -hmm. go, like, oh, that guy, he was a complete asshole. Mm -hmm. that, that stuff follows you. Yeah. I mean, obviously if you did like a dick thing in school that shouldn't haunt you for the rest of <laughs> no. your career it's not like no. that but it don't it, be a consistent dick <laughs> yeah consistent thing that's a good one <laughs> yeah but i mean this goes the other way as well if you're incredibly helpful and yeah. just a really friendly guy all around which i mean that's just generally a good way to live life but that stuff spreads as well i've seen that so many times in you know i've seen so many people essentially get hired at the pub <laughs> because yeah. they're just good people you happen to meet like a supervisor or yeah. a head of department or whatever at the pub. You start talking. They're like, "Oh yeah, we have a position open." Yeah. They're like, "Oh yeah, just send me an email." Yeah. And you know, then that sort of seen goes that out. so many times. A good reputation can will just it will just lead the way for you. Yeah, and that, I mean that's also really important. Like I, I, we don't do it as much anymore because we have so many things keeping us busy right now. <laughs> uh, Flip almost particularly. Yeah. In the networking part of both going to school and let's say you go to the pub or whatever but also at school like if you get in different teachers um the people around you people above you mm -hmm. um, that might have they maybe they've had an internship somewhere yeah. that that part is again invaluable it's so important to stay up to date with your network yeah. and i see that as one of the big issues for people that sort of keep them from actually connecting and getting into the industry is because I guess there's this like stigma around people who do VFX and animation we're all like super nerds, mm -hmm. right? We're all super nerds and we all live in our mom's basement. Mm -hmm, of course. And you know, I, I mean, I did. I did live in my, <laughs> my mom and my dad's basement. That's, that's not a lie. Um, and I'm not like- But uh, not anymore. No, and not, yes, not anymore. <laughs> like I'm not particularly fond of hanging around too many people. I'm, very, mm -hmm. I'm a very close person. I yeah. like my time. Yeah. But I still had I had to make an effort yeah. going out to the pub or make an extra effort to talk to the teacher. Make sure you know, not in a not in a brown nosy kind of way, but just as a, in a pure interest kind of way, where I was looking out for my interest and I was curious about things in the industry. Yeah. Like you're like you're a little opposite. You real you like people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> people so, and dogs. <laughs> people and dogs. But I think it I think it is really important. No matter how, what kind of person you are, it is it is definitely s self. Like what do you what do you call it? self promotion? Yeah. I guess yeah, self promotion and networking is is so key, and yeah. you get the chance to do that and practice that when yeah. you're at school. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I always try to make my students bribe me with whiskey, oh, okay. which sometimes is working pretty yeah. well. Which <laughs> it doesn't really give them anything, but I get whiskey. So <laughs> <laughs> you, you promise them a job. I, yeah, promise them a job and everything. <laughs> the, the the quality of the job is proportional to the quality of the whiskey. <laughs> Thirty year whiskey is like supervisor. <laughs> But one of the cool things about about schools as well is some of them have amazing connections to the industry. Yeah. Like just over the last few weeks and months now, I've been I've been going out on recruitment shows as a representative of my studio, and that's been amazing. Like just seeing how close some of these 
some of these <laughs> schools are to the industry. It's so much easier. I'm constantly replying to students over email and they can get proper feedback from me. At least I like to pretend I give them proper feedback. <laughs> <laughs> That that stuff is so useful. Yeah. Because then you're already you already have an in there. I, I I've had students before, you know, who I've met in person, and who are just really good people. Look, I've I've shown I've shown their reels to to supervisors, and they've been hired as a direct result of that. And when they're making their reels as well, I've been able to tell them what you should and shouldn't do. That is that is absolutely invaluable. I can't stress how important that is. It's a networking part of it. So going to school in that regard, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, like like, like straight up, my first job is a direct result of me talking to one of the teachers we had during school, Mm -hmm. uh, go to London, have my internship, started chatting with him again at the pub, Mm -hmm. and uh, like a month later, he sent me an email saying, hey, do you want a job? (laughs) And I went... Yeah. Yeah, I'll take uh, I'll take a job, please. I'll take a job. Yeah. And, you know, there was a job. And that's 100% because of networking. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's 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 an extremely powerful tool to have. Yeah. No, for sure. Just really, really just weigh all this up with the financial cost of it. Yeah. I, I think that is, that is a really big one because you can really trap yourself there. Yeah. But, I mean, schools are... Schools are great. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they can be great. And it's 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 weird doing this kind of um, talk that is let's say ninety percent negative about <laughs> school yeah. because there are so many red flags and things you have to look yeah. out for. But it's 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 really we're trying to do this in your best interest. Yeah. And I guess it, it can come off as kind of hypocritical. So like, hey, don't go to school. I mean, we went to school. That's yeah. okay. But <laughs> it, that is because there was a lot of research that went yeah. into that and a lot of prep and a lot of work during school. It's yeah. I think that is a, a, a key thing if you do want to attend a school. Absolutely. So to to sum up all all our little rants here, <laughs> <laughs> we can we can just sum this up with uh, that going to school can be amazing. It can really be a life changing experience. And when I when I got to when I was going if I when I was going to go to school, I I cho- I had a choice between going to school or just going in as a junior. And I'm so glad I went into school. Mm. That was such a good experience for me. I highly recommend going to school if 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 it's one which is right for you, which is which means it's something you want to do, it's the right finances, and it's in a place where you you feel comfortable. And just be so careful about picking your school. Spend months on research on this. Really talk to students there. Maybe visit the place. You know, get people to give you Skype tours around. You know, <laughs> just just really really spend spend the research on it because that the more research you spend on this the better this is going to be in the future. This is an incredible investment. And also, like we said, certain schools are extremely expensive with emphasis on extremely. Again, $250,000 is not unheard of for certain (laughs) American schools. Yeah, It's crazy stuff. And visas is something you need if you're going to a foreign country, at least certain foreign countries, and a degree can be helpful for I that. I guess that's something we didn't really touch on, but mm. it is it is like a, sometimes a bachelor degree can help you with a visa. Yes. That was why I initially wanted to go to Same school. here, same here. I mean, I ended up not really using it. No. <laughs> it can be useful, but again, your skills yeah. are top priority there. Yeah, exactly. And you will not get a job just by attending an art school or a 3D school, no matter what the school is telling you. They, <laughs> no. will, they will lie to you. And so your most important thing is your showreel. Your showreel is king. And a good school can definitely help you do that. Mm-hmm. Like Mort and I, like we said, we, we go around to schools. We've been teaching, I was teaching character modeling for like two weeks, like a few months ago now. And that's like, me giving proper proper lectures on full-on character modeling for a few weeks. That kind of stuff is, well, I like to think it's valuable. <laughs> I realize my bias here, but that stuff is is incredibly useful yeah. when you get proper teachers to teach you. And if, if you find the right school, it can be the best decision of your life. And the opposite, if you find a terrible one... Yeah, that, that can haunt you forever. That can haunt you li- like literally, literally okay. forever. That can be the worst decision you ever made. We yeah. Again, we don't want to sound make this sound all doom and gloom, but it is actually very serious. We have we have seen people who who will never get out of debt. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason we're doing this this chat. It's yeah. Because it's, it's a really important thing, and it's something yeah. that we care a lot about. Yeah, it really is. 
And one of the main keys of going to school, one key points is networking is absolutely amazing if you attend a good school. Yeah. Both with your lecturers, with the connection the connection the school will have to the various studios, and and just the friends you're getting there. Yeah. The guy next to you, he might be a supervisor for the next Jurassic World 62 or whatever <laughs> comes out. Oh, can't can't afford that. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for more dinosaurs. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, I mean, I think that pretty much covers all the things we wanted to talk about. Yeah, I hope, we hope, really hope this has been useful and not too ranty. <laughs> I mean, I'm expecting this to be a little sort of divisive yeah. because there's a lot of bad things being said and a lot of good things. But like ultimately, this is, this is just meant to try to help you make an informed decision, yeah. really. Um, like, like Henning mentioned, we have a link to the article yeah. that that we wrote a long time ago about this exact thing where we break down things in terms of which schools, what they cost, that kind of stuff. So feel free to check that out. Yeah, we actually give specificity for schools. Yeah, we didn't want to focus on anything specific here, but that is is written in the article. Yeah. So let us know if you want to have more of these discussions and what kind of topics you'd like us to cover. Yeah. So we're definitely looking forward to doing more of these in the future.